to a special Baltimore excursion episode of... Brutal Battle. Yeah, so we've been doing a bunch of these excursion episodes recently. We did Frederick, Maryland, we did Columbia, Maryland, and now we did Baltimore, Maryland. And we did the Baltimore one for a specific reason. That is... My birthday. Yep, and this was Rebecca's choice. We actually hit up two breweries, but since we usually talk about a little bit more than that to make it a full episode, we're also going to throw in talking about a very popular, very famous bar within uh, Maryland. Sorry if you hear the cat moving around. Uh, And um, we've been there a few times. We didn't go there for this particular excursion. So we'll just kind of be talking more generally how we feel about this beer bar and, you know, just some information. And there goes the cat. So, uh, yeah, so the two breweries we hit, and then after that we'll talk about this bar. Yeah. And we only, I mean, Baltimore has, because we were trying to decide what to do for my birthday, and I was like, you know what, this is kind of embarrassing because we live not that far from Baltimore at all, and there's so many breweries that we need to check out. So we only did two. There was a lot more we could have done, but um, we just did two. Yep. So let's get into the first beer, and that'll lead us to the very first brewery. So the first brewery we're doing is Diamondback Brewing, and the beer we have that we bought from them is in a 16-ounce can. It is an IPA called DQ'd, and this is the tangerine version of their DQ'd, which I believe I had read has the addition of tangerine, uh, lactose, Lactose. and vanilla. So it's kind of like a milkshake. Like creamsicle-y. Yeah. Kind of milkshake yeah. And we had this. Well, we, did you say we had it while we were I there? Did not. Okay. So we, this is one of the beers we um, had while we were there. Um, obviously, we liked it because we bought some to go. Um, Although it's been like over 24 hours since we had it. So it'll be like we're trying it all over again. It's been for 24 hours. Right. It's a 7.7% alcohol. So here you go. Okay. Let's talk about what does this d- tangerine DQ look like? It just looks Yellow. like a, it's a slightly hazy, very orange-looking IPA. Yeah. That's what I get out of it. Oh, it just smells so... Ooh, I mean... It smells great. I don't know if I could say that's tangerine. Yeah. I mean, I would say orange, maybe blood yeah. orange. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, I mean, it's a like, citrusy yeah. fruit. You definitely get the hoppy notes as well because there's a little bit of a bitterness on the nose. There's a little bit of a vegetal note i feel like as well um slightly floral and then you i feel like i get the vanilla yeah i definitely get the vanilla for sure and it's it got like a creamy nose I yep, feel i was like. just gonna say i'm yeah creamy vanilla and some sort of orange citrus mm-hmm. yeah um it just smells clean it smells bright yeah, if someone set this beer in front of me and said, like, this is like an orange dreamsicle beer, I'd smell it and be like, yeah. yep, mm-hmm, it smells dead on. And it tastes like that, too. And for me, this is really spot on with how I like this kind of style, because you have that, like, the, you know, the bright citrus, creaminess, vanilla, and then you have a little bitterness on the end to kind of round it out. So mm-hmm. it's it's a nice balanced beer. So the tangerine is a lot stronger in the flavor than you would actually think. It kind of like punches you real quick. Um, and Carlin is throwing like a punch yeah, in the I'm throwing, air. Throwing a punch in the air. It like the kind of punches you in the mouth. Like the tangerine comes out of the gate swinging, basically. When you take that first. Okay, sip. there was another punch. Hopefully, you guys <laughs> yeah. dodged that one. It's like boom, boom. tangerine. <laughs> Right hook. Seriously, it's like boom tangerine, and then it starts to calm down, and then that's when you're getting the vanilla, that kind of like creaminess from the lactose, and then it finishes with a nice, like medium low bitterness, I'd say. I li- I love it. Mm-hmm. I loved it then, I love it now. And um with that bitterness, it then begins to start to be like that tangerine peel. It's more of like a bitter peel with a little bit of fruit included. And um it's good. Okay. You wanna give me a little more? So mm-hmm. we went there. On a Friday. Yep. Um, Took off work, because that's how you do. And what time did we get there? Like, one-ish? Yeah, probably about. One-ish on a Friday. And it was like, there was some, there was like a group of six people there. There was a couple at the bar. There were... Yeah, when we first got there, there were, it it wasn't much when we first got there. It was like maybe a few tables. And then as we were there for 
for about an hour and a half yeah. total, it really started to fill yeah. up. Quite and we were like, and a lot of people looked like they were coming in from work. And I'm like, who are these people getting off at two o'clock on a Friday? Well, they're starting their Friday and their happy hour, right? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we just should have done our homework about the smokestack. Oh, yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. But go ahead so, and describe it. It's a cool place. Yeah. It looks really cool. So it's in the McHenry Row um, part of Baltimore. So it's like Locust Point, Fells. No, Locust Point. Um, I don't know. You know these regions better crap. better than me. Um, Federal Hill. Locust Point, Federal Hill-ish area. Um Right off of 95, McHenry Row, Mm -hmm. um, which is a really up-and-coming, or it's already not up-and-coming, it's already coming, um, neighborhood right where that Harris Teeter is. Mm -hmm. um, So there's apartments and some restaurants and then um, Diamondback, which is really built around the bottom of a smokestack. So the entire bar is... Like kind of, it's like a half circle yeah, around, around the bottom of the smokestack, yeah. which is it's it's really cool because when you first go up to it, there's a bunch of outside seating that's really nice, and it's like those like nice hip modern like lounge yeah. outside lounge chairs, and they have like some umbrellas, which is important because it's been friggin' hot. Um, and then you see like this gigantic smokestack, and it looks like it goes right down into the building, but you don't really know. Or you can't see it, yeah. but then once you get in, you see the bars right there, and like Rebecca was saying, it's like a half circle around the base of the smokestack, and it's just really cool because it's like a legitimately cool, old-looking brick smokestack, and the fact that it's just like right there as you're sitting at the bar, it's just kind of cool. Yeah, and you know, the whole time we're like, I wonder why we still didn't look up, look up like why it's that, there, yeah. what it was. So from we originally. decided to go to Diamondback. First, because they do pizza. Yes. And they make their own dough, make their own sauce. So we're like, well, let's check them out. And we were not disappointed. Mm-hmm. So we got just a basic margarita pizza. They had, I guess, three staples that they have, and then they have three seasonals. Yeah. Um, and they also do pretzels. So you could do pretzel either with beer cheese, mustard, or Nutella. Mm-hmm. So for me, I feel like it, I, I'm picky with my pizzas. In order for me to get a pizza that I enjoy enough to want to eat more than once, uh, either the crust has to be really good, the sauce has to be really good, or they both components have to be decent. Um, so in this instance, I felt like their crust is is decent, and their sauce was phenomenal, though. Yeah. Like, their sauce tasted so fresh. It was, like, legit, like, crushed... Um, Crushed yeah. tomatoes with nice, nice levels of spices thrown into it, and like I said, the crust is decent, and with that sauce being really awesome, it makes for a nice pizza experience. So they, to munch on that while you're sipping on a bunch of yeah, beers, it was nice. And they have they don't have taster sizes though of, of beers. Pours. Like they're oh, look, they're right. small pours, like eight ounce. I thought it's like a half pour, or a regular pour. Yeah, half pour. Yeah. Exactly. So, so which isn't terrible. Course. I'm happy with that because I, I I can imagine having a bunch of different sizes of things and glasses is a, just a pain in the ass to deal with. So I'm good half pour, regular pour because then you can kind of use the same yeah. glass and you're only kind of doing half or. Um, but what I was gonna say about the they have like a little herb garden when you enter, as well as like inside. So I'm assuming that's the basil then that they used for our pizza. Yep. Um, they have nine taps. We had had their green machine before, so yeah, we so opted we try that one. not to get that one. Yeah. And then we tried everything else, right? Yeah, we had the DQ Tangerine, which we're sipping right now, which, as we've said, is really good. Uh, they have their Hop Broth, which is an IPA. It's like a ha- it's a hazy IPA, as well as their uh, Poppy, which is another hazy IPA, which. They taste a little bit different, but kind of similar. Like in my opinion, I'm so I'm. I know you guys have heard me say it before on the podcast. I'm kind of sick of hazy IPAs, so it's not really my thing. But when I go places, I want to see how that place does a hazy IPA. I think I like the second one better. That was the poppy. The poppy. Yeah, yeah. I like that one better. P A P I. Yeah, like poppy. Poppy. Yeah. Um. 
But I mean, they were they're solid for hazy IPAs. Yeah. It's oh, just not yeah. my thing anymore. I just don't really want them. Um, so, and then we had an Ostend Sundays, mm-hmm. which that was a blonde ale with pineapple. Pineapple. That's right. Which I really liked that one. I um, liked it, but you like. I quite really liked, liked it. it. Yeah. Um, if we didn't have so much beer in our fridge, right. um, I would have. We. I would have bought some of that. I thought it was just perfect warm weather. Easy to drink, um, sessionable, yet flavorful. The pineapple was nice and, um, you know, refreshing and present. Uh, Mm. I really liked it. And then they had Atmospheric Changes, which was a Kolsch, Mm -hmm. which I like that more than you. Yeah. Um, I thought, like, it it was just a nice, solid, easy drink and Kolsch. Yeah. I liked it. I just like my Kolsch is a little more clean. Um, And that one you could only get in a full pour. And then they had their Tal Uno. Which was a imperial stout that I believe was like a mole imperial mm-hmm. stout. So it had like a little bit of heat to it from some peppers. It had like vanilla flavor, chocolate flavor. That beer was really yes. good. Really good. That by far was my favorite beer. And that was only done in one size as well. But it was um, not a half pour, yeah. not a full. It was like an in-betweener. Yeah. Because it, I think that one was an eight ounce. Yeah, maybe. I mean, because that was, that was ounce, yeah. like... 10%, 11, 14. Nine. No, it was nine. Okay. It was nine. Um, yeah. That was so a good So we year. had, yeah. we had a great time. And our server was really nice. His name was Brian. Mm-hmm. Very helpful. Um, yeah. We talked about their friendly. brewery cat, Inky. Inky the brewery cat. Yeah. Who's a little bit of a dick sometimes. <laughs> Apparently. Um, as all cats are. Well, Brian was saying it's mainly because of the fact that because of their new food license, with the pizzas, they they can't have Inky in the tap room because you can't have animals where there's food being made. So he has to, if Inky comes in, he has to chew him out. Yeah. And so Inky, he said, used to like him, but now since he has to continually chew him out, he's just, he hates him. Yeah. So he's not letting him do what he wants yeah. to do. That's how cats are. So. so he's not really a dick. He's just... Not allowed to do what yeah. he wants. Um. And they had good bathrooms, which I always like. <laughs> yeah, the bathrooms are nice. And I like the fact that when you're in the bar, like, on the, when you first walk in on the left side, there first of all, there's a cooler with canned beers that you can take to go, which is where we got the tangerine dq And then there's a wall of windows. And you can just look through the windows, and it, like, goes down a story, and that's where they're brewing. All their brewing equipment's down there. So it's cool because you can get, while you're drinking a beer, you can just get a top-down view of the brewing that's going on there. That's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, and they have, um, you know, seating around the bar. I was, like, trying to count up the seats, and I came with around 50, and then I think when I saw somewhere on their website they said seating for 50. Yeah. But it's, like, you know, spacious yet quaint, mm-hmm. bright, lots of natural light coming in. I we, I don't know. I was thinking, I'm like, it would be really cool to live in one of those apartments. I just walk down and there walk and down drink there and walk up. Because sometimes they have, yeah. like, bands on the little stage yeah. in their outdoor space. And they have, like, these lights that are strung up. Um, and then with the office buildings, they had two food trucks there. Yep. Um, and they, like Carlin said, real posh, swanky-looking outdoor seating. Um, and a little, it looked like fire pits. Mm-hmm. Um but I would say if you, uh, that sounds like it would be awesome to live right there, but it would also suck too, because if there are bands oh, playing yeah, at night, loud. I who's know. going to sleep? This is just my fantasy world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I just, the last thing I just want to say is I just really like the aesthetic of the place. Yeah. Like it just feels it hip. Fun. It feels comfy. It feels fun. And yeah, I just really enjoyed yeah. it there. And they had water, easy access to, like, certain things, like, you look at, you know, like, easy access yeah. to, like, refill water when you need it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it's certain and, things like that. And, and good beers. Hooks to put your purse at the bar, which yeah. I like. There you go. Um, anyway, yeah. The so only thing have, I will say, and this is actually not just something against them, this is something that just happens, especially with older buildings in uh, Baltimore that air conditioning not so hot doesn't work the best so it was kind of warm well we don't know if maybe that, they just didn't know, have it on right or maybe they just didn't have it set super high they're trying to cut costs yeah 
Was that it? that's just something that happens in Baltimore in general. Yeah. I feel like when we go to like restaurants and stores and yeah. stuff down there, it's usually pretty warm. I mean, it's always warmer in the city. Plus, I don't know if you noticed there were there the back door seemed like a lot of delivery people were coming, coming in, in just out, to yeah. use the bathroom. Yeah. Um, so it probably was like a quick stop yep. in and out. Um, but again, we were also there in July and it was ninety some degrees. Yeah, it's so. hot. It was hot outside. That's like a small... And there's parking available there, yes. which is a nice thing, especially in Baltimore, because with a lot of places in Baltimore, it's just find parking if you can on the street. If yeah. not, pay out the ass for yeah. for a parking garage. And what's nice, too, is right outside they have um, a designated like drop-off pickup area for Lyft and Uber. Yes, um, which is cool. So I was like, that is... Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. We a lot of it. things to draw people to that yeah. place. And I would go back. For, for sure. sure. I want to go back. Yeah. All right. So, the next beer we're going to have is the next brewery we went to, which is called Checker Spot Brewing. And they've only been open for a year. Yeah. Like, exactly a year. Diamondback, I know, has been open longer, but I don't know how long. I want to say 2013 or 14. I don't know. Maybe. Um, whenever I looked it up, I was like, oh, wow, that's embarrassing. We haven't been there, and they've been open quite some time. Yeah. So this beer isn't a crowler because they don't can. They don't distribute or can or have stuff just available. So you can just do crowlers. So I have a crowler of this one. This one's called Baltimore Bomb, and it's 6% alcohol. And it's an experimental beer that they did in conjunction with Dangerously Delicious Pies, which is a well-known pie company in Baltimore that makes, like, really good pies, the savory and sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, so with this one, they collaborated with Dangerously Delicious Pies, and it's a dessert IPA. Mm-hmm. So basically it's an IPA done normal IPA way, except the addition of using biscuit malt and chocolate malt and vanilla. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. it is obviously small batch. Yes. Um, and they had done, like, a beer release of it the night before, and I think they had some of the folks from... Fucking oh, mess. everywhere. I think they had some of the folks from Dangerous, Dangerously Delicious Pies there for, like, a little event. Um, That's what I hate about Crowlers. It's like, yeah. when you pour from them, the positioning of the hole, the opening, and how far it has to go, it always creates a goddamn mess. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Crowlers... Crowler design kind of sucks, to be honest. But also, it's probably also because it should be filled super high. Um, Yeah, it's not so much that. But, um... Yeah, so we... Carlin. It's all good. (laughs) Yeah, you keep talking. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we get to check our spot. By this time, it's like three-ish o'clock. Oh, also, back to Diamondback. They also had um, some games. Um... Which is kind of fun to engage in. So check your spot. Also, um, when the Ravens are not at home playing, they have free parking in the lot right across the street. Mm -hmm. So that was super convenient. So we did that. Um, No dogs are allowed on the second floor. But when we were there, the second floor only opened like half. We didn't even go up there. Um, there was one dog there, but he did not bark. He or she did not bark at all. Thank goodness. And there's also a baby then who came that was also a well-behaved baby. The baby didn't bark either. The baby didn't bark either. Good. So we had a well-behaved baby and a well-behaved dog, which I'm totally fine with. Yeah. Um, and I guess we want to... Yeah, let's sit, hold the hold rest. Hold the we'll rest. Do the, we'll, do, okay. we'll t- talk about this beer and then we'll okay. continue. So it's darker. I mean, like it looks like a... a a porter yeah, or like a, a nut brown. Yeah, basically. It's got a little bit of a tan tinge to the head that's on there. You and then s- you smell toppy, though. I know. So then you sm- I mean, you look at it and you can tell it's, <clears throat> well, it looks like it's going to be a dark beer, but then you smell it and you get those hops. So yeah. You're kinda and, like- and it's kind of weird how like the chocolate malt and the hops play together. So it kind of like harkens back to. When Cascadian Dark yes. Ales, a.k.a. Black black IPAs, were a thing. Yeah. And it kind of smells like that, but with a lot more, more s- chocolate. Yeah. yeah. And I do get a little bit of that vanilla yeah. as well. Um, so, like, it, you know, it's like one of those beers where you look at it and you think you know what it's going to be, and then you smell it, and you're yeah. like, WTF. Well, when we had ordered it there, I didn't look too close at it. I just saw, oh, Baltimore Bomb, and it was in collaboration with yeah. Dangerously Delicious Pies. So I assumed when it was poured, it was just like a stout. And then I started drinking. I was like, 
what is what is I know, this? I kind of did the same thing because I didn't look that it was an the IPA. I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, you, well, I went to check in on Untapped, and then I, I could only find it as an IPA, and I'm like, what? Well, because then I think you were like, this is the bomb. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was weird, but um. Yeah, like you can smell a little bit of a hoppy citrus note just like throughout each sniff. There's a nice bitterness. There's that nice chocolate to it. There's a slight soy sauce note probably coming from this chocolate malt. But it smells good. It's a little bit ashy on the nose as yeah. well. Chalky um, as well, like dark chocolate. Yeah. So it's our drinking. It's just nice and flavorful. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, a, it's like a nice combination of... Vanilla, sweetness, hop, chocolate, um, and again, at a 6% ABV, it's very approachable. I mean, literally, literally. Literally, we're <laughs> watching Parks and Rec, so yeah. we, every time we say literally, like we're like, Trigger. literally. Um, so literally. And Perkins. It, it basically tastes like a black IPA, but with more chocolate than you usually get out of it, and, and a little bit of vanilla. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what it tastes like. And I like it. Yeah, like, I think it's nice. This takes me back to when black IPAs were a thing, and I kind of wish they still were. Not many people are doing it. But they were good. It was a good style, and yeah. it's still a good style. So we really like this. Um, we They had a, quite a lot of taps there. Maybe... Oh. oh, by the way, this is based off an actual pie. The Baltimore Bomb. Yeah, yeah. that's like their most popular pie at Dangerously Delicious. It's, a, it's a, like a chocolate... Pie. Yeah. Chocolate and other stuff pie. Yeah. Dessert one. Um, what do you think they had? 10? 12? Um, probably closer to 12. They had a decent amount on tap. Yeah. I was pretty impressed. They had, they definitely had more than Diamondback yeah. did. So we had, are you pulling up what we had? <laughs> yep. We had a, a Hill, Hillbilly's Gold? Is that what it's called? Hillbilly the Gold, Pilsner? which is a pills. It was good. Oh, that was fine. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't like huge on it. Um, you know, cause I've had some pills, pills nerves that I'm like, oh my God, I love, love, love this pills. It's good. I liked it. Solid. Oh. Um, this beer I quite liked oh, we did and like, you quite like yeah. Juniperus IPA. Yeah. So it's an IPA with juniper berries and those juniper berries play really well in that IPA. I would, I think if we didn't or couldn't have gotten this in the crawler, we would have got that one. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Definitely. It was really good. But I also want to get something different. Like, I thought about just getting a Crowler, the Juniperus, but I was like, I want to get something different for the show, because we had the DQ Tangerine oh. from See, the I Diamond just Back, wanted so. this one, because that one was my favorite. Well, it was quite good. Then we had the Saison de Fleur with Rose, so it's just the Saison with Rose. Which was also, I liked that, I think, more than you did, because I like Rose. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. Like, do you like Rose? Do you not like Rose? It wasn't crazy, but you could definitely taste yeah. the Rose to it. So it it's like, do you like more floral stuff and actual flowers in your beers? Right. That's the question. Um, then we have Butterfly Kisses, which was their Hazy IPA, which, honestly, for Hazy IPA was pretty solid. Um, I didn't, I think I liked it more than if it was if it seemed like a straight hazy IPA to me i feel like it had a little bit more bitterness than i would assume from a hazy IPA and yeah i think you, you know, like that, that more than in i my did situation. and then then we had the baltimore bomb those were the first 3 then we, i went back up and we got another 3 so we got baltimore bomb here's the the key. locally delicious with stone fruit so it's ba- oh, that's it's a, a kettle, kettle sour, sour. Mm-hmm. with stone fruit i think it was like apricot and peaches and stuff like that and um you know i'm not i'm not big on kettle soured beers but if you have enough fruit in it or if you hop it enough and make it like a sour ipa then i'm good and this one had enough fruit and the fruit was had enough uh like intricate flavors to it to make it a decent sour. So I enjoyed that. The locally delicious stone fruit. That was that was good. Baltimore bomb. And then we had the keeper, keeper stout on nitro. On nitro, which I really like that. And if okay, yes, I said if that wasn't a nitro and we could get a crawler of that, right. I think I would have got it. That's what you would have wanted. Yeah. yeah. Cause I I let it be your choice basically, because it was your birthday. But um, I really liked that. But what was the keeper stout? Do you remember? Um well it was a stout. With, brewed with crab shells. Yep. So I was thinking kind of like an oyster stout mm-hmm. a little bit, but not as briny. Right. Because the crab shells are are definitely less briny. Well, and I thought it was 
kind of a cool homage to yeah. Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore. Baltimore, as some people say it. Baltimore. Yeah. yeah, and then um, the only other beer that we had when we were out, because we went and ate at Woodbury Kitchen, oh, right. which if you're not familiar with... Um, if you're not familiar with uh, Baltimore Woodbury Kitchen's like a nice high end uh, but restaurant, not, like but not crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really amazing food there. If you make it to Baltimore, definitely check it out. If you like, if you're a foodie, uh, and I got a Where Daca Brewing Company's three two one Goza. It was a Goza with strawberry. And that was good. Yeah, solid. I had two co- two cocktails. I really. Not like a huge liquor person, but Woodbury Kitchen always has they, awesome, they do fun make, cocktails. Yeah. Uh, there are bars that like, they, they make cocktails, and then there are bars where like, and restaurants where they like, specialize kind of in cocktails. And Woodbury Kitchen has really good bartenders who specialize in cocktails. And they're just so. fun to watch, and they're fun to yeah. make, mm-hmm. um, watch them make, and they're, and we had amazing service. Yeah, the service was um, ridiculous. Which I'm kind of picky about because when I go out and I have a nice meal, I want someone to be able to walk me through the menu, talk me through what this dish is like, what this is like, what the, these drinks are like. Um, and I think I, from drinking all day and then my two cocktails, I did tell her waitress that I loved her. <laughs> she did. <laughs> I will verify she did say that. She's like, I love you. And her initial response was, oh, <laughs> this is very caught off guard. But then I told her why. Right, and, right. Because um, she did do it. Like, she kind of went through every single dish. Yeah. And, like, with the cocktails, she's like, these are more light. These are more spirit forward. And, yeah. um, and so she really helped. It was, it was just a yeah. great day. Um, I'm sorry. I felt like we shortchanged the talk on Chucker Spot. A little bit because I just wanted to finish out on the beers. So going away from Woodbury Kitchen back to Checker Spot, um, did you have anything additional to say about it? Um, they had decent ambiance. Yes, and they had a Relax. they had a lot of games. They had a lot of games. They had we, nice seating. The seating was pretty diverse and nice. Mm-hmm. Um, we should have gone upstairs. Yeah, we should have gone on the upstairs. That parking situation is great because it's like right across the street, very easy to use. Bathrooms are nice because they yep. have two. Everyone bathrooms, and then one, I think, more geared towards men, because I think there was a urinal in that one. The diversity in their tap list is great. Like, they had, you know, you heard we had, like, a Saison, we had a Hazy IPA, we had, you know, this dessert one, they had a Maybach, they had a Sour, they they hit, like, almost everything. Well, the one that I really wanted to try, but apparently the Baltimore bomb took its spot, was Mm -hmm. a bourbon barrel-aged brown. Yeah, Um, sounded good. Good. And there was no like obvious note that they didn't have it, so I went to order it, and they're like, "Oh, sorry, the Baltimore bomb took its spot." But the like, Baltimore bomb's really good. Yeah, so we weren't so, disappointed, but yeah. um, and they did so they didn't really have food, food, but they had snack foods. Yeah. So they had some, um, I think maybe jerky. They had like mm. they had some weird food. They had um, quail. I think olives. They had quail, <laughs> um, and they had. Um, it's just an some eclectic cheese. mix. Yeah. Uh, but that was nice. I, you know, it's good yeah, just to have, nice. like, some food options. And at bo- both establishments, obviously, they were, like, they were swagged by. Yeah. And I don't think we caught the bartender's name. No. But, but he, he was really nice. He to was. Because I always like to tell people, I'm like, what's well, our first time here? What mm-hmm. what should we try? Yeah. And, um, what do you guys pride yourself on, basically? Yeah. And that we didn't try the two that were wheat ales, but they had a wheat with strawberry. Yes. And they had a wheat with apple. Yes. Um, I kind of wish we tried the one with strawberry. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, yeah. obviously we can go back. We had to pace ourselves a little bit. Uh, the last thing I want to say about Checker Spot is I love their logo. Oh, yeah. Their logo is a pint glass with beer in it. And it has wings like a Checker Spot butterfly. It's called Checker Spot because the Checker Spot butterfly is the official Maryland State butterfly. So it's a pint glass full with beer, and it has wings on the side of it, and the wings are made up of hops and barley. Mm-hmm. And it's really creative, and it looks really good. Yeah, you should check. You people Google it and look. It's, yeah. it's pretty. I sweet. didn't realize. I didn't realize Checker Spot was a butterfly. Mm-hmm. I certainly didn't know that was Marilyn's butterfly, but as I was looking, I know. It's very cool. 
And then, all right, so Chuck Spock, really yeah. good. Diamondback, really good. And then we're going to talk about the place we didn't go to in this trip, but we have been to before, which is Max's. Max's Tap House, which is down in, in the thick of things in Baltimore. And Fells Point. Yes, and anyone who's a craft beer nerd who lives in Maryland knows the name Max's. And part of the reason for that is they have the best tap list in the state. They also have been there so long and have been doing craft beer so well that they get first right of refusal to a lot of the more rare and limited offerings that come into the state. So like things like Canteon, they get first right of refusal on that. And I think they take it every time so no one else gets it. Uh, but a lot of other things like that. And they also end up hosting a lot of events. Right. In particular, there was a time that we were down there not long ago, which I don't think we talked about on the podcast, where Sean Creel, who's been on the podcast before, now works for The Brewery, who everyone knows I'm very passionate about the beers from The Brewery. And he's actually the head of sales for all of the East Coast for them now. Well, isn't it? Everything east, Everything of, the east Mississippi. of the Mississippi River. Yeah, basically. Which is a lot of territory. So It's kind of a big deal, I think. No, true. Very true. Mm-hmm. So and he, we know him. Yes, we do. And he's been on this podcast. We've been to his way, house. Way back. That's right. And um, he also helps me out by picking my beers up for me yeah. <laughs> down in D.C. He's like your beer mule. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. So we... Um, we had ended up going down to Max's a bunch of months ago. It was like February, March, I don't know. something like that. It was somewhere in there, yeah. I think. And they were doing like a, a big event at Max's as like a launch of the brewery, like a relaunch in a sense, because they've distributed in Maryland for a while, but they just haven't had much of a presence. It's kind of like they've just sent their beer, but they haven't had salespeople on the ground. Yeah. So... That was kind of like their relaunch in Maryland. It was a big event, and they had a lot of really awesome stuff on tap. So for that reason, the third beer we're having is a brewery beer because, you know, just tying it into they have these big, awesome events with really awesome rare beers. So Okay, so this is obviously at the brewery. It is double chocolate sprinkles. It is an imperial stout with lactose, aged in bourbon barrels with cacao nibs and vanilla. And it is 11.5%. I am. I was very surprised when I looked at the ABV on that beer because when it comes to bourbon barrel aged imperial stouts with the brewery, they're usually higher than eleven. Yeah. So at that event when we were at Max's, there was like a group of guys, and they're like, "Okay, I think should we all go in and get Black Tuesday?" And they were talking oh, about yeah. how high the ABV is, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Do you think should we get it? Should we not get it?" So I felt like the need to chime in and be like, "It's good. You yeah. should get it." <laughs> well, and. <laughs> It also, they had a bunch of, like, vintage beers on tap, yeah. too, and um, on tap and in bottles. Yes. And And Sean Creel, at the end of the night, was just, like, gave me oh, this, like, five-year-old Mocha Wednesday. It was just like, let's drink this together. And we shared, all three of us shared that five-year-old Mocha Wednesday, and it was tasting very nice. But they had a lot of really good beers on tap. But... But this is to illustrate that, like, this is what happens with Max's. Like, that's normal. Yeah. Like, they get the best of the best from breweries, especially when they're doing these, like, launch events. And anyone who's intelligent brewery-wise who comes into the state and wants to announce that they're there, they go to Max's and say, let's have an event. Because people know to just flock to Max's for beers. Well, and they have, like, a German... Beer, beer fest. fest. They have sour, sour fest. What else do they Belgian have? Belgian fest. Yes. And I think they have one that's like a rare beers fest. Yeah. And obviously, that's where they just put a bunch of rare beers yeah. on tap. We've never been to any other events like that because no. we kind of don't like people. Yeah, we we like to stay away from crowds as much as possible. Hence, why when we did Rebecca's birthday excursion, we took off on a Friday and went like. <laughs> In the beginning of the afternoon. Uh, yeah, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about this beer. Yeah. So it's Yeah, dark. we'll talk more about Max. It's dark. It looks creamy. Yes. Doesn't it? Imperial Stout for sure. It's got a nice brownness to the head, although the head's not crazy. Probably because ABV is so it hot. It smells very, um, it smells very vanilla-y and very creamy. Yeah, it does. Oh, it does have lactose. That's yeah. right. And it okay, smells that's like why. chocolate malt. It smells a little milkshakey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a dark chocolate and vanilla milkshake, yeah. in a sense. And there definitely... is a decent bitterness on the end, and I think part of that's from a little bit of an alcohol. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, I'm definitely bourbon. getting the bourbon. 
Oh, yeah. The bourbon's in there as well. You get a little caramel coming through I mean, with that it, as well. A little raisin. It smells like I want it to be. <sighs> a little so. wood. A yeah. little bit of a wood character on there, too. It smells great. Well, we've had this beer before, right? Yeah, but it's been... I mean, I don't remember months. it. What? What Does it say what year it's from? Probably not. Oh, yeah. No, it does. Uh, 2018. Um, but it's it's close to a year old. Because it was done in September. Like, mid-September. Um, so, it, it tastes just like it smells. Um, it's not overly boozy. I mean, it's boozy. You a, yeah, you get a little bit you of that. You get it. Um, but it is... It tastes a little more like 9%, though. Yeah. To be honest. I just, and that's my biggest beef with the brewery is like I just I don't want to drink an 18 19 percent right 16 15 like 11.5 okay that's it yeah. I don't need it's like black Tuesday's like 20 percent basically and it's just like unnecessary super unnecessary which is why we prefer so happens it's Tuesday which is like 15 percent which still that's really high but it's significantly yeah. less than black Tuesday black Tuesday tastes amazing but it's very unnecessary the alcohol level with it so, but that's why it's good that I think they're going to start with a lot of their bigger beers. They're starting to put them in 16 yeah. ounce cans so you can get smaller amounts instead of before it was like 750 milliliter exactly. bottles only. It's like, <laughs> what? The occasions that you can drink that beer is, I mean, you have to have, have a bunch of people. Yeah. This beer is too easy. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is. And that lactose really helps with mm-hmm. the alcohol, I think, because it rounds things out. Where because of the alcohol, you can get a little bit of an astringency at the end or a little bit of a rough finish. The lactose steps in and rounds it out because it makes it so smooth. Yeah. Um, good amounts of vanilla, plenty of bourbon character without tasting super alcoholic. Good chocolate to it, really nice vanilla, a little caramel from that bourbon, and a little bit of raisin. I don't like too much raisin, and this just has like a touch of a raisin note because of the high ABV. It's a good beer. Mm -hmm. It's a very good beer. So Max's is like a very like kind of traditional bar type atmosphere. It's not nice. I mean, it's not. It's dingy and crappy looking. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's like a, a bar. It's not. It's, it's like, like it's. it's you, you're gonna go yeah. there for the beer. It's a no frills bar. Correct. Yeah. It's like yeah, you go there for the beer. You 100 percent go. But there they have for the food, beer. and I've heard people say their food is good. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's bar food. Yeah. So I don't know if we've ever. Uh, what did we order? We did order. We something. had ordered a little something. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's, bar, fine. it's bar food. It, it's not good. It's just okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you don't go there for the food. You don't go there for the ambiance. You're just there for craft beer. Yeah. That's it. Or and it is dark and it is dingy. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of the people we saw there were there for something else that night. What do you mean? I mean, I think they were like looking to score. Oh, well, I mean, it's a bar. Well, I'm in a densely populated city, you go to bars to meet people. The Fells Point's a cool place. You know, it's it's right there with like the cobblestone. The water is right there. Um, there's a gelato place across the street. Yeah, good stuff. Um, there is um, a restaurant called Duck Duck Goose, also right in the area, mm-hmm. that is supposed to be more like upper class fine dining esque. Um, the owner wanted to try to open a fine dining restaurant in an area where there wasn't a lot. Um, and that was very busy when we were walking by with outside seating. Um, and the menu looked very good. Very good yeah. um, what else? But it's it's also in a, a really a cool area because, yeah. you know, the harbor is right there. But you were saying before that we don't go down for any of their, like, big fests, partially yeah. because we're not big into, you know, being in crowds of people. But the other big thing is they don't have designated There's no parking. parking. It's I mean, one it's, of those places yeah, we were talking about where it's like, if you can find street parking, which, good luck, yeah. most likely you're not finding it. You're going to need to park in a parking garage that's some blocks away will charge you a crazy amount of money just for a few hours, and it's a pain. I mean, when we went there for the brewery event, we lifted to the city. Expensive. Which was expensive, <laughs> but we both, none, neither of us were going to be the DD, so. No, not for a brewery yeah. event, because you know they were going to have high ABV Well, beers. I mean, neither of us probably could have, yeah, you know? Oh, yeah. like, well, they had released what the, the yeah. list was ahead of time, right. and I was like, Tons of barrel age stuff, and I was just like, "Yeah, no one, no one's driving." Yeah, so we just lifted, which is, 
It was yeah. fun. It was a really fun night. Yeah. And then, Sean didn't spend like a ton of time with us because he, he was going around socializing with people yeah. to get the name out there and he everything. He was working it. But he would pop back over every now and then and, and just be like, hey, how, how are the beers? Because we were trying a lot of the stuff. Yeah. That's where we first tried the American Anthem. Right, which was amazing. And the Sole. Or no, he, I, it wasn't Sole. It was the Attain. The Attain's their bourbon barrel aged strong ale. Well, I think he came over to like say and then also be like, here, try this, try this. Yeah. And we're like, oh my gosh. I'm yeah, going to die awesome. tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, the, um, oh, and since I, I brought it up, the American Anthem, we love oh. that beer. It's, it's like a bourbon barrel aged beer done with peaches and cinnamon. So it's basically supposed to taste like a peach cobbler and it really does. And so it good. is phenomenal. And, and Sean said it was really good, and I was like, oh, okay, we'll see. And he was he was right. Sean never really steers He's always right. That's yeah. why I usually ask him ahead of time. I'm like, are there any beers coming out that I should keep my eye open for I should definitely buy? And yeah. he'll just be like, I think this one's amazing, this one's amazing. I'm like, yeah. got it. So, yeah. Because so he gave us a heads up on the rice and beans as well. Right. Which is a, it's their horchata, which is like a blonde ale made to taste like a horchata. And the rice and beans is that horchata, but with coffee added to it. And it's very tasty. So that's a a little bit about two breweries and one beer bar in Baltimore. But I I feel like we need to do more of these Baltimore excursion episodes. As we also need to do more Frederick excursion episodes. Because they have a lot of bars out there. Bars and breweries out there, too. I know. Um, Columbia, I think we hit it all, actually. Yeah. Good stuff, but... I think we hit it all. And they're not as big as... Yeah, Baltimore, there's... A lot. A lot. I mean... More than enough. I've been to Full Tilt. I've been to Waverly. You have not. I haven't. Nope. There's Monument. We've been to Union. Oliver. Peabody. What else? Plenty. I mean, there's more. There are other yeah. ones. We just can't think of them off the top of our heads. But yeah. So we'll do that. Uh, let's rank these three beers, oh. even though they're they're I all. I don't quite, want to. They're all quite good. Okay, all quite good. I got it. Go ahead. Do you want to guess mine? Uh, number one is the double chocolate sprinkles. Nope. No. Is it the Baltimore bomb? Nope. Oh, the DQ tangerine DQ. Yeah. Okay, we'll go. go oh, through. okay. So my I number can't one, guess it, obviously. <laughs> I know the tangerine DQ. It is good. A number one. Um, hmm. my diamond back. Then I might go the be more bomb. Okay, the Baltimore bomb because it is a unique style, and I sure. do love the yeah. double chocolate. I love them all. I do love the double chocolate sprinkles, but it's not anything like I haven't had before. You I know, can see that. um, but let it be known, all of the beers on this table will be consumed and yeah, will be yeah. loved. No, I like I like them all. Um. <sighs> Mine's a little harder. Um, I'm having a hard time with my number one, but I'm going to give the slight edge to the brewery's double chocolate sprinkles. That's your number one? Yeah. I'm going to give a slight edge to that, but right behind it is the checker spot Baltimore bomb. That Baltimore bomb's really nice, especially because it reminds me of the black IPA days yeah. and with some chocolate added and some vanilla, and it's very tasty. And then... In third place, but still really tasty, and I'm going to drink more of it, is the Diamondback DQ Tangerine, basically milkshake. So we're, like, completely opposite. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, but that's the thing. It's like, I like all these beers. You like all these beers. Like, we're going to drink half of each of these and love it. There's no losers. No. No one is a loser. Yeah, we're not a loser. These beers are not losers. Cool. Well, hopefully everyone enjoyed this episode. Uh, also, if there are breweries out there that you know we can get to, so like in Maryland, maybe in like lower Pennsylvania, yeah. maybe maybe Upper Virginia, Upper Virginia, Delaware, Delaware, Jersey. Yeah, Jer- a little bit of Jersey as well. So Jersey. give us some ideas of some places you're like, man, I'd really love to hear what you guys think about this place. And then yeah. maybe we can have another excursion episode doing that. Or a brewery showcase if we can only make it to one brewery. But we'll figure it out. Um, send us an email at brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, do you have anything else? No, there. I took some pictures on our this excursion. They're on our Instagram, so you can kind of see what that smoke stack looks like. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I think I posted it, um, a picture of the Checker Spot butterfly, an actual butterfly. 
Nice. Um, but you can also see the logo of Checker Spot. Cool. So, anyway. All right. Check that out. Yeah. Diamondback Checker Spot and Max's. If you're in Baltimore, do them. Yeah. Thank you so much. And until next time, keep it brutal. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production. 